Good morning, students. Welcome to Commerce class. Today, we discuss the dimensions of business environment. Dimensions. We know what is business environment. The last section we discussed the business environment and its various features, importance, etc. Business environment is the sum total of individuals, institutions, and other forces that lie outside the business enterprise and may influence the enterprise for its functioning and performance we studied. And every firm should know the changes occurring in the business environment, business environment to make its policies and program to adjust it with the changes. And this understanding of the environment can be obtained by environmental scanning. We learned it is a process by which organizations monitor its environment and the changes to find out the opportunities and the threats. Environmental scanning uh, gives some advantages, some benefits. We have seen such a first to mover advantage and it gives information about the early opportunities. We can make use of these opportunities instead of leaving this to the competitors. Then early warning signal. In early warning signal we have seen, we will get the knowledge about the impending threats and we can take any corrective step. After that we have seen customer focus. So by knowing the environment, the business enterprises can produce the goods and services according to the taste and preference or wish of the consumers. Then coping with the changes. Environmental knowledge is needed to make changes, make adjustments in the business environment. Then also it brings an image, it creates an image. Then it is a broad based education and continuous learning. So environmental scanning is important. Now we will discuss about the different, dimen different dimensions of business environment. So these dimensions, micro and macro environment. Micro environment includes the internal and external factors that directly influence the functioning of the individual industry. Macro environment consists of general factors political environment, uh, social factors, economic factors, legal factors, all these are coming in this macro environment. Here we will see the micro environment. As I told you, micro environment includes internal and external factors. These factors influence directly the individual industry. So, micro environment is the immediate environment of an enterprise that influences the per performance and functioning of the industry. That is why this micro environment is also known as task environment or direct section environment. Okay, micro environment is called a task environment or a, uh, what is called a direct section environment. Because uh, this micro environment, uh, internal and external factors directly influence the individual industry's activities. Then, it is important for every business enterprise to know the various elements of this environment. The micro environment can be broadly classified into two internal factors and external factors. External factors we will discuss after this. Internal factors. Internal factors are the factors that lie within the business frame and the business enterprise has control over these internal factors. 
business enterprise control this internal factors direct control is there see uh, a business enterprise which can modify or alter its environment which can modify or alter its organizational structure programs and policies physical personal and marketing mix to suit the changes occurring in the environment see this internal factors are controlled by the business firm business enterprise because it can make it changes it can modify it can alter its organizational structure its marketing mix its strategies and so and sometimes this business internal factors are not controlled by the individual business enterprise because you see this internal factors impart both strength and carry threats in the in the environmental scanning we studied which help us to know about the strength and the threats opportunities and limitations so this internal factors sometimes causes threat and sometimes it imparts a uh, uh, what is called advantages strength a strength is a strength is a permanent advantage strength is an inherent capability of an enterprise to gain a strategic advantage over its competitors okay a strength means that's the basic that's the permanent capability of an enterprise which gains a permanent advantage over its competitors at the same time you see uh, the, the the threat threat is an inherent limitation or constraint which uh, cause a strategic disadvantage so internal factors are the factors which lie inside the business enterprise various internal factors of the business enterprise business micro environment are the corporate culture it is also called organizational culture corporate culture is also called organizational culture then mission and objectives top management structure internal power structure power relations company's image and brand equity human and other resources these are the main internal factors directly influence the activities of a business enterprise we'll see about corporate culture what is corporate culture i told you corporate culture is also known as organizational culture so this term refers to the shared values beliefs standards attitude or behavior that determine a company's employees and management interact and handle outside the business transaction okay the shared values the values attitudes and beliefs of a company that determines how a company how a company interacts with its management and handles its business transactions outside so the corporate culture or the basic values or the value system what is that shared values attitudes beliefs this corporate culture or this organizational culture or this value system characterizes the members of an organization and defines its nature so this is corporate culture and this is very important for any enterprise any business enterprise for its successful functioning now you see this value system i mean the values Uh, beliefs attitudes and standards of the founders and the top management exercise a strong influence on what a company stands for 
how it does the things, what it considers important. So in this case, corporate culture is important to know about the company. What is the company standing for? How it does the things, how it carries out the things, or what it considers important. So this is the importance of value system. And if this corporate culture or the value system shared among all the members, when the value system is shared by all the members of the organization, we can say that the organization would be successful. And which does not have a strong value system, it is to be failure. Now you see, the companies having a strong corporate culture, a companies with a strong value system have achieved prestige and success in the business world. The good corporate culture brings prestige, brings prestige and success to any companies. So this is corporate culture and this corporate culture has four elements. This value system has four elements such as good leadership, uh, then uh, uh, commitment, uh, listening and communication. Leadership, uh, listening, communication and commitment are the elements of this corporate uh, culture. When we follow this, we can, uh, a company can bring a good corporate uh, culture and succeed. The next one is mission and objectives. Mission and objectives of an enterprise. Mission and objectives of a, a company. We know objective of every business enterprise is to end profit and its maximization in the long run. So last year we studied, okay, profit earning is the objective of a, uh, the business. But mission is something different from this narrow objective of profit maximization. Mission is different from this profit maximization. Mission is the overall purpose or the reason for its existence, which guides and influences the business decisions and other economic activities. This is business, uh, what's called this is a mission of a mission or mission of a company. Mission is the basic purpose or overall reason for the existence of any company and this guides and influences the company's decision making and other activities. So the business philosophy and objectives of any company guides its priorities, plans and policies and programs, product scope and market, product market scope and development. Okay. A company's policies and programs, uh, priorities given to company's policies and programs, uh, product market scope and development, all these things are there. So business philosophy, what is business philosophy? Business philosophy is a set of principles for what a company is working towards to achieve success. So this mission and objective, another internal factor that uh, determines the company's success. A strong mission, companies with the, the strong mission of the company form the base for its success and uh, development. So these are the two internal factors we have discussed, uh, mission and objective, corporate culture. Then the next factor is top management structure, stroke management structure. So which includes the composition of the uh, board of directors, the degree of professionalization of the management and its organizational structure have a significant influence on the decision making and functioning of the company. See, uh, composition of the board of directors, degree of professionalization of the management, organi organizational structure. Organizational structure that uh, different job positions are assigned in an organization is known as a uh, organizational structure, the job relations are uh, placed. Then, the board of directors set directions and monitor the changes of organization, Mo monitor the development of the company, functioning of the company, performance of the company. The 
company having qualified boards of directors outperform those companies do not having such a board of directors so what we have seen the board of directors or the management plays a significant role in taking decision and uh, the working of the company other factor you see uh, the shareholding pattern of the company is also a factor uh, determine the decision making of the company based on the shareholding pattern companies are classified into closely held companies and widely held companies so in closely held companies the majority of the shares are owned by the promoters and their relatives actually in closely held companies promoters can retain the control of this company that's why they do not list the uh, shares in the stock market always and another type of companies widely held companies in widely held companies minority of the shares is owned by the uh, promoters or the founders the main majority of the shares are given to the public so in such companies the nominees of the financial institutions control the board of directors because majority of the shares are owned by these financial institutions so this top management structure is an important bearing for a decision making and functioning of the company so far we have seen corporate culture mission and objective and the top management structure then next one internal power structure i told you in the organizational structure various job positions are assigned job relations are assigned this one is very important the relationship between top management and executive is an important factor some companies this close management or narrow management structure there the top management takes the business decisions there the middle level management or work level managers have no role to take the decision and their lack of trust and confidence to the subordinate there is a lack of trust and there is a lack of trust and confidence to the subordinate and business secrecy pervades throughout the organization so what happens here the lower level employees or the subordinates lose the sense of belonging as to the company as there is no uh, proper communication also not there and in some companies having open management structure their business decisions are taken at the lower level managers there is high degree of trust and confidence to the subordinate from the top level management also there is free communication between this uh, what's the top level management to lower level management so this business relations are very important this uh, management relations are very important for the functioning of the smooth functioning of the business so the extent to which uh, the top management enjoys the degree of trust and support from the subordinates and employees play a very important role for decision making and functioning of the industry then another one image and brand equity so companies image companies name and brand equity play a significant role for forming alliances with other company and choosing dealers and uh, suppliers also entering into the uh, entering into a foreign market or launching a new product or uh, forming relation to the financial companies this image and brand equity is an important thing this image and brand companies name and equity just to help forming alliances choosing dealers or uh, choosing suppliers or launching a new product in the market or entering in the foreign market this is very important the named companies named companies are called for these things then another one human and other important resources human resources and other important resources you see motivation morality 
and competitiveness of the employees are important factor for the development of this some companies some companies uh, these companies needed the support of the employees for its expansion and modernization programs some companies face difficulties in its restructuring and expansion program due to the resistance from the side of employees so therefore their cooperation is needed for the functioning of uh, industries then organizational structure human Uh, uh, this research and development and technological factors other physical assets financial position and the capital structure are the other factors other resources which are play important role for the functioning of the company and these are the main internal factors that uh, uh, internal factors that uh, what's it directly influence the companies activities especially for an individual uh, company's activity individual industries 